What's up guys? It's your girl Books with Bonnie and I am back with another effing video. Um, today's video is going to be all about some of my favorite reads of this year. This year was a lot. It was hectic, it was frustrating, it was annoying, it was emotional, it was overbearing unwillfully and I'm so happy to be at the end of this month. Y'all just don't even understand it. So we made it to December, so that's all that matters. I'm just trying to hold on to the last piece of sense that I have and just make it out. Make it out and make it out. <laughs> but with that being said, I did get a chance to read some books. Um, honestly, I did a lot of months this year starting books, not finishing them, and just like, I mean, come on. The world was just too much, okay? Just way too much okay but with that being said I did get a chance to finish some books and I loved a lot of them that I read so here's some, some of my top books from this year let's get into the video so the first book is one of my favorites um, authors she did such a great job with this book um, she recently came out with grown um, I've yet to read that I've heard mixed reviews but in this case I read Tiffany D Jackson's allegedly baby my mind is still like what the hell did I just read um, it was realistic it was so much drama so much damage content um, trigger warnings trigger warning and trigger warning it's so much going on in this and I couldn't even like keep up at points the great thing is I read it but also I ended up I read it and didn't understand a part of it so I didn't I end up like listening to it I think I used the Libby app to listen to it and then once I did I was just like oh, what like oh I think Tiffany did an exceptional job when it comes to this. I was so elated to like really sit down and get this book and read it and I was like whoa mind blown. This book got a four out of five for me but like man I was just like wow Tiffany you did that girl you did that okay what's up okay <laughs> so that was one of my favorites from this year okay now moving on to another one okay I so I didn't read a lot in like school that wasn't necessarily school how do I explain this so I read a lot in school but it was mostly due to my studies because when I was in high school and even in college I did like t double courses so I didn't a lot I didn't do a lot of reading um so when I anywho the next book is The Lost Heroes. I actually buddy read this with my bestie and I'm actually re still reading the series. I think I'm on the third book, um, Mars of Athena or something like that. I haven't started that one yet, so I'm gonna start that. But this was such an incredible read. I'm a huge fan of the Percy Jackson storyline, so I was really interested in getting this one. Um, but instead of Percy Jackson and it just being Greek mythology, he also threw in Roman mythology. And I was just like, how did you even come up with this? But it was so good. It was such a fun adventure. And it was incredible. I loved how he went in details of everyone, um, character and in the backstories was really important and how uh, Greek mythology and how Roman mythology really intertwines and it was such a fun read. Um, this one actually got a five out of five for me. I really really enjoyed it. I couldn't put this book down in the beginning of this year so I strongly recommend if you haven't read it or or even read the Percy Jackson series I strongly recommend you do because it's such a great fun read. So yeah <laughs> this one was a goodie <laughs> as you can tell I'm excited to talk about it. All right so the next book is actually um, called The Perfect Fine and it's by Tia Williams. So this was actually a book club read of mine and whoo this one got all the kind of drama juiciness uh, but basically it's talking about an older woman who really invested her entire life her career was her marriage um, she really invested everything into her marriage and then when her marriage kind of fell apart she had to really redefine who she was so she had to go back and work for a frenemy of course and kind of rebuild this understanding of what her life should be or is going to be going forward but then she falls for this new guy and this new guy yeah 
don't know. So this new guy that she falls for is like so off guard. Like you don't want to do it. You don't don't do it. But then it's it's so good. I'm trying so hard not to tell you guys because it's such a <gasps> moment. But um, this book was so freaking good. I gave it a four out of five and. I just think the realism, um, it's really, um, it's based in New York, so it's fun, it's fashion, and I just think she did such a good job. Um, it's, it's a lengthy read, I'm not gonna lie, but I got a lot of notes on this book. Uh, but yes, my book club enjoyed it. We are crazy. Um, one of these days I'm gonna record just one of our book club meetings just so you can see how crazy we are. But this was definitely a good read. It was great to talk about. It was fun. It talked about black excellence and just the fashion world, which I love. She gives me like Sex in the City vibes, but also like it talks about Harlem and just like the growth from there. It was oh, such a good story. I don't see why this book doesn't get enough like a lot more hype. Um, it is a little bit older, but I think this author did such a good job here. Ultimately, if you haven't heard about it, I recommend you check it out. It's one of my favorites. Just saying. <laughs> so the next read is actually going to be something I'm actually it's actually the first part of a book I'm reading right now for my December TBR, and that is going to be A Curse So Dark and Lonely. OMG, if you haven't read this book and you are a fan of Disney and you're a fan of Beauty and the Beast, which I am a huge fan. I love Beauty and the Beast. I mean, come on, look at that library. I'm gonna love what that story since the library. I saw that and I was like, Oh my God, I wish a man would give me a library. Technically my fiance did, but we ain't gonna talk about that, okay? Anywho, so this story is all about, um, I forget the main character actually, uh, Harper. Okay, so the main character is about Harper. Um, basically she's in a tough spot at home. Um, it's her mom who is dying and her brother who is just trying to make ends meet because her mom can't physically work. Um, Harper and her brother get in a situation where they gotta kind of get out of there and <laughs> they put themselves in a situation that's dangerous and Harper seriously has to get out of there. She, she came to support her brother basically. Um, but with her guards down, she was kidnapped and taken to a different world. So what's really great about this is that it's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, so you kind of already know what's gonna happen, but in this situation, it really talks about like her having, um, I don't, she has a, I don't wanna call it a disability, but she has like a functional thing that she's working through, and technically it is a disability. I just don't know the wording for it, and I'm very cautious about how I talk about it. Um, for those who don't know, I do have a younger sibling with disabilities, so it's really dear and near to my heart. Um, that being said, she basically is stolen and taken to a different realm um, by this, I guess, this military guy who works for the kingdom. And the beast, um, he's basically not the beast at all times. He's most, most of the time he's human, but when he does become the beast, he has no control over it. So very different from the Disney stories that we know, but because of that, um, they're really rushing, just like in the original, they're rushing for them to find love so the beast can stop appearing and killing people and it's so great and Harper's like her storyline and her backstory is just oh it's so incredible like love this book I really really love this book I gave it a four out of five as well I'm really picky when it comes to giving fives but like this one was super close I feel like I'm gonna make it a five when I read it again I feel like that's gonna be the case just saying so since we're in the spirit of Disney, um, I read Cinder, uh, The Lunar Chronicles, and this one is by Marissa Myers, and <sighs> so good. I love retellings. I'm, I'm, uh, at first I was just like, no, I know the story. It can't get better than that. But these twists that they're applying to these stories, I really, really enjoy. I hear a lot of people talk about, I don't really like retellings, and I was one of them, so I understand, but I finally, finally got into it. I've had this series for so long and I've yet to pick it up. So this year I did, and when I say Cinder was so good, so good. So I actually listened to this on Audible and it was so great. So she's basically a cyborg. Um, Cinder is part cyborg um, and she again wants to fall for the prince and 
wants to be saved and all this goodness. I personally really, really enjoyed um, that extra layer of like technology and how it's impacting the people. And you get a lot more. And her, her wicked mom, you just want to punch in the face. Like, you know what? I'm not going to try to condone violence, but if somebody needs to be hit in the face, it was her. Just saying. Come at me, mom. <laughs> But anywho, um, really enjoyed this one. If you haven't started the series, um, I recommend you do. I know that there are new covers to these and I'm really contemplating on buying them again and getting the new covers, but in hardback. So mm -mm, I don't know yet because I have this entire series, but I have them in softback. So we'll see how that works. Okay, next. So I've probably been reading this book forever, forever, but every time I read a different story in it, it gets even better. So here we have it, Buffy, volume two. So I finally read, so earlier this year, I read The Coyote Moon, and then I read The Night of the Living Rewind. Both stories, killed it, killed it. I love Love, love, love. I'm gonna keep saying love in this, so I need you guys to say it with me. Say love, love. Yeah, so, <laughs> so Coyote Moon, awesome story. Um, it was basically about um, these people who could shape shift into moons, and they, I mean moons, they could shape shift, shape shift words. Can't talk today. Okay, so basically it was about these people who can shape shift into coyotes and they were super old, they never died, and they could basically shape shift and they used this carnival to kind of steal people and like feed off of them. So of course Buffy had to come through, knock everything out, and they win in the end. <laughs> so happy story in the end for each one, but like, oh my God. Um, the most recent one that I read was The Night of the Living Rewind, which I read um, in October because I was feeling real Halloween-y. And that basically was saying that there was a demon from the old ages and Buffy and her friends basically was having these dreams about different lives that they didn't live. And in that they use the knowledge from those basically dreams they use the knowledge from those basic dreams to help fight the same monster from that time frame it was oh, so good love it love it love it so my goal here by the end of this year if not in january to read the last book in here which is i mean read the last story in this book which is portal through time so and then i'll finally be done with volume one <laughs> But so far, this book has been incredible. Um, right now, I'm going to give it a four out of five until I finish the last book in it. So, volume one. <laughs> All right. We are, okay, we are getting down to the nitty gritty. We're at 14 minutes, so I'm trying to speed through this. Um, so, let's go ahead and start with a book I was actually gifted from N Natasha D. Lane. If you haven't already, go follow her on Instagram. Tell her Bonnie sent you. Um, the Woman in the Tree. So good. Okay, so this one I gave a four out of five as well. Uh, the storyline is basically about a kingdom that was overthrown and to escape this woman basically got pushed into a tree and protected because it was like this scary place. <laughs> so she basically gets tucked away in this tree and she was able to survive through living through the tree for a few years. So fast forward in time, now the tree releases her and now the story is totally different. So the people who actually overthrew her friends and family and basically back cross them are now in control of the kingdom and now you see her go on this journey to save her family her friends well basically to save the kingdom and what's rightfully hers um loved it it was an extraordinary story i personally really enjoyed just seeing a woman that's like not afraid to stand up for herself or her family like it's so refreshing when women are like independent but can still be seen as sensual and and delicate but also like a badass like don't play me don't play with me so yeah i i personally really really love this story okay whew. 
All right, so now we are on the very last story of them all, which is another book club read. And this is an oldie. So I've been reading a lot of, um, with my book club anyway, we've been reading a series by Darian Lee, which is a lot older, to be honest. I mean, I'm talking pages and beepers, like older. Um, but we read the series. I personally really enjoyed it. Um, her writing style is definitely easy to read and pick up on. But we read it and it was really great and my favorite story out of the books that we did read was what goes around comes around 